calling the Ten Commandments the Ten Commandments is a little bit of a misnomer. Uh, because you see, uh, first of all, in the second one of the Ten Commandments, there are actually three separate prohibitions. Don't make idols, don't worship them, etc. Don't, don't, don't acknowledge them as God, etc. And the first statement is not even written as a commandment, as an imperative. It says, I am the Lord your God who took you out of the land of Egypt. So is that an imperative? Is that a commandment? So in Hebrew, they are referred to as the Aseret Hadibrot, which means the Ten Statements. Aseret Hadibrot the Ten Statements. And they are, to a great degree, not just commandments, uh, but they are actually statements of reality. They express a moral and a spiritual reality. So when it says, I am the Lord your God took you out of Egypt, what it's saying is, it's just a reality. You know, you, you may like it, you may fight against it, you may try to ignore it, but that's the reality. God says, I, the one who am giving you these commandments, the one who is giving you this Torah and this destiny, I am the one who took you out of Egypt and you shall have no other allegiances to anything that is described as God, etc., etc., and so on and so forth. They're describing a reality. This is one of the reasons that you know, when we Jews say the Shema, that verse in Deuteronomy 6, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Lekein Hashem Echad. We cover our eyes. We say Shema Yisrael, Hashem Lekein Hashem Echad. And then we uncover our eyes. The standard explanation of this is that it promotes concentration. And that's, that's possibly true. But I think, I remember hearing from my teacher, Ramosha Shapiro, a different explanation. He said, we cover our eyes as we proclaim the oneness of God and our acceptance of God as the, as, as the only God. And he says, what we do is we then uncover our eyes because now we see the world in a different way. Someone who looks at the world through the eyes of monotheism, through the eyes of one who knows that there is a God, sees the world differently. We see things as not random. We see things as deliberate. We see the idea of destiny. We see the idea of purpose. That's a different world than one who sees it without that reality of God. And so therefore we cover our eyes and we, we accept God and we accept the Yichud Hashem, the oneness of God. And then we uncover our eyes as if to say, now I'm looking at the world in a different way. And that's what happened to the Jews at Mount Sinai. At that point, 3,200 years ago or so, I don't remember the exact date, but that point, 3,200 years ago, the Jews' eyes were uncovered. We were no longer polytheists, multiple God believers. We were no longer animists believing in the power of everything. No, we were now monotheists. And forever, the way we would look at the world would be through a different reality. Sometimes that reality clashed with those around us. Eventually, many, many around us today, most of the world's population have accepted that reality of monotheism. However, what it means, I am the Lord your God, there are 10 statements, they're like 10 statements of reality, paralleling the 10 statements of creation. Uh, let there be light and so on and so forth, because these are statements, not just commandments, but they are statements of a reality which the Jews have accepted and through which we see life and the world and our destiny. This is Mordechai Becher with the Gateways Parashavlog. Thank you.